Alpha 0 0 right, heading 185, reduce speed 180 knots. 185 on the heading, 180 on the speed Gulf Air 0 0 7. Speed at 124, reduce speed 160 knots to 40 ME. Hello guys and welcome to part 2 of the uh, full Airbus flight from uh, Belfast to Liverpool. Uh, we've just loaded in on stand... Uh, what number was it? I don't know, I can't find the markings. I think it was 11 or 10 um, at Belfast and just when we loaded in the first thing we did was just on this right hand side FMC or MCDU. I know it's, it's sort of greyed out at the moment but uh, it was powered on and we selected aircraft state and then loaded the cold and dark state. So that's where we're at at the moment. Uh, we have Active Sky doing the weather. This is UK 2000's Belfast. Um, that is it as far as add-ons go. Oh, as well as GSX, of course. Yeah, we have GSX at the side of the aircraft at the moment. Providing us with Erlingus stirs. Very cool. Okay, so first thing we need to do is get some sort of power to the aircraft. Uh, so we do that initially by using external power. If you look on the overhead panel, you can see the external power button is available because we are on stand with the engine shut down and we have the parking brake. I think is set. It may work while it's not set. Okay, it works either way. But just for good measure, set the parking brake and hit the external power on. Now, with that on, we have functionality to both of the MCDUs, which is really, really good. That means that we can get the virtual first officer to kind of kick his ass into shape and get this plane ready for uh, for departure as fast as uh, as possible. So if we hit checklist and then we turn the checklist on and we also turn the co-pilot on, then we can select the cockpit preparation checklist and then he will run through his own little flows and we can just kind of sit here and watch him do that. Okay. Let's start with the cockpit preparation checklist. Battery. Set on. Electrical power. And the external power is on. Navigation lights. Set on. Engine master. Both off. Engine mode selector. Checked normal. Landing gear lever. Checked. Parking brake. On. Flaps. Checked position. Speed brake lever. Checked retracted. Trust levers. Idle. Transponder mode. Checked standby. Radio control panel. Set on. Ecam recall. Checked. Anti skid. On. Flight director. On. Emergency lights. Set. No smoking signs. Set on. Anti ice. Off. Crowd window heat. Off. Air condition. Checked. Ventilation panel. Checked. Electric panel. Checked. Fuel pumps. Set on. Hydraulics. Checked. Acu brake pressure. Checked. Ground proximity warning system. On. Electronic flight control system. On. ADIRS. Set to nav. Emergency equipment. Checked. Checklist complete. Okay, great. So he's done his, his sort of pre-cockpit preparation. Oh, sorry, cockpit pre preparation checklist even. Uh, so you are probably scratching your head as to why the displays are still dark. That's not a bug or anything like that. We just need to turn them on. So you do it on the left-hand side here, which will turn the PFD on, which is the primary flight display, and then the ND, which is a nav display, and then also in the middle here, the upper ECAM and the lower ECAM, which will turn the middle two displays on. Um, so, because we have GSX, and GSX will not work properly if we don't open the doors, I'm going to open the front left, and the, oh, the front left's already open, and the aft left, and then the front cargo, and the aft cargo. And that will board us some passengers and get us some cargo. In the meantime, we can head over to the FMC. Now I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see it. There we go. Uh, first thing you need, just clear that error message and then head over to the init page and we can say we're going from Belfast and we're heading to Liverpool 
Uh, we can align the IRS. The alternate's Manchester. And the flight number we can make up, I'll just call it Easy 923 Foxtrot because they kind of use alphanumerics. Cost index, whatever you want. I'm going to use 8. And the cruise level is flight level 200. Hit that. Press next page. Well, actually, I say next page. It's just the right-hand arrow, uh, which will take you to this. Now, the only thing you need to fill in on this page is the block fuel, because everything else is done for you. So just look on the upper ECAM, and it says FOB, which stands for fuel on board, and we have 4,000 kilograms, which is 4 tons. So just type 4 in, and it will calculate the rest for you. Then we head over to the flight plan page, and if you select the top left on the departing ICAO, and then press departure, and then we're going from runway 25, and then we just insert that. There is no SIDS, as I said, in part one of this. So it's usually just uh, an, an ATC conditional clearance, something along the lines of after departure, turn left on track to XYZ and climb to whatever flight level, and then a squawk. But for now, we're not using ATC. So from the second one down, we can just go direct to the first waypoint on the flight plan, which is Lisbo. Uh, we can enter that in the next waypoint and then just select the closest one which is there. Then from Lisbo we are taking the Lima 603 airway which we can enter on the left hand side here and then that's going to Pepod or Peapod, I don't actually know how you pronounce that. Um, and then from there we're going direct to the Isle of Man. Actually what am I doing? There's no airway. After you've entered an airway and a waypoint if your next waypoint is then a direct you have to insert that first and then go to Peapod or Pepod and then type Isle of Man separately and insert it that way. So that's all done. Uh, we can program the arrival when we're in the cruise nearing descent. It's not mandatory to do it beforehand. Um, we can now, if you remember in part one, we got the takeoff performance calculator to do some figures for us. Now it's time to enter those. So if we hit the perf button, uh, we now need to enter in those figures. So we're using flap 1 and I told you to drop down the trim. We are using 0 0.1 down. So we type 0 0.1 DN, Delta November, that stands for down. If it was an up figure, then obviously you just type up, but DN is for down. So down, and then we enter that in the flap forward slash THS, which is just there. Now it will automatically calculate a flex temp for you, but because we got TPC to do it, we're going to override that and put 60 in. And then we are going to enter the V speeds manually. So 130, then 137, and then 138 is in there. The transition al altitude is fine. You can ignore the TO shift. As far as I'm aware, that's for uh, if you're approaching uh, the runway and the ATC, all of a sudden just say to you, it's time to go from an intersection. Are you able to do it? Uh, you enter how many meters uh, from the end of the runway that is and it kind of just gives you a, another recalculation of things but we're not going to be doing that we're taking the full length so that's all good so that's the FMC or MCDU whichever way you want to call it done uh, we just need to check Active Sky which I'll do now just to see what the Q&H is so it's 1022 so we can set that now and then we can start closing the doors and get ourselves underway. So if we tell GSX that we're ready to go and we want the tail to go left and we want the nose to come right then it'll do everything it needs to do on there. You can play around with the radios, uh, the radio selectors if you wish. Uh, that's putting VOR on the left hand side here and on the right also VOR2. We can set an initial altitude. I'm going to set one of flight level 90 because I think, I don't know why I think, but when I've controlled before and I've handed stuff off, that was the agreement outbound traffic would climb to. Um, so maybe I'm wrong, but it doesn't really matter for this purpose. There's no ATC, so don't worry about it. So now the uh, GSX has told us that it's ready for pushback. Sorry, that's probably going to make you all quite dizzy. We can close all the doors, and then with the, cl the doors then closed, that will initiate the next point on the checklist which we can now see in action. Okay let's do the before start checklist. Windows and doors? Closed and locked. APU? Set on. APU bleed? So wait for the APU to start now and then he'll do it himself. 
set on. External power. Disconnected and off. Cabin find. Set on. Trust levers. Idle. Parking brake. On. Error reference. One zero two two. One zero two two. Check beacon lights. Set on. Check this complete. Cool. So the uh, before start checklist is now complete. Now you can play around with the the ND settings on here if you want to have a look at your flight plan and stuff. Uh, they normally fly with it in arc mode and then whichever range you so desire. We'll leave it at 20 for now. Um, so we are ready for start and pushback. However, if you have GSX like me, you don't want to use the inbuilt feature. So you just want to request start on its own and we shall do that now. Flight deck to ground. Go ahead. Good old Microsoft. Sound. And ground, we have ATC clearance for start and the taxi now. Please confirm ground equipment and services are clear. Roger. Ground equipment and stairs clear. Doors closed and wheel shocks removed. Start both engines. Is okay. We got a pushback talk, is it there? Oh, yeah, it's down there. Sorry, I couldn't see it. So anyway, ground has sorted us out, uh, so we can start the engines when we're ready. We're just waiting for GSX to uh, to finish up, and then we can get pushing back. It's actually quite funny because uh, considering how uh, I wouldn't say advanced, but how good this aircraft is uh, from a captain's point of view, it's very strange that everything works so well. And then when you call ground up, you uh, are well. You heard it. It's Microsoft, Sam. Anyway, GSX is done. Release the parking brake. And back we go. Airbus starting of engines is the most ridiculously simple procedure you could possibly imagine. It is literally turning this engine selector to ignition. Oh god, wrong way. Start. And then you just flick the desired engine on with the fuel, the master switch. Uh, so we want to start number two first, which it says here, start engine number two. So we'll do that. Starting engine two. And then the woman will confirm it, the virtual first officer. And then we can see here M1's increasing, and then that's followed by N2, and then we'll, that'll be followed by EGT, and then it'll burst into life. And you'll hear the good old barking noise. There you go. As a PTU kicks into action. Engine 2 is stabilised. Now we can do the exact same for number 1. Starting number 1. And while that's starting, if you want to get into a good habit in Europe, if you don't have any ATC, for IFR flights, if you squawk 2,000 and 2,200 uh, in the States, you may and some brownie points for the Vatsim, but we're not on Vatsim, so it doesn't really matter. Engine 1 uh, stabilised. Also, the Unicom frequency, if we're not on ATC, is 122.8. We should have probably done that. And that's a good start stuff. on both engines, all systems normal. Thank you for your help, and uh, all clear. We'll see you for signal on the right, please. Roger, good start. All clear signals at the right. Have a good flight. God. Why is it flashing for? Black textures, not good. Anyway, we'll be all right. So... We are now waiting for GSX to finish the pushback, then we'll set the parking brake, and then it will run its after start checklist. And I really like the after start checklist, and I'll show you why. Right, so that's GSX sorted. I'll just set the parking brake. Now the great thing about the after start checklist, as you'll see, is it sets the trim, it sets the flaps, and it does all after that amazing stuff. After start checklist, stuff. please. And it also lets you do a flight control check. Engine mode selector. Set. APU bleed. Set off. APU master. Set off. Ground spoilers. Set. Ruder trim. Check zero. Pitch trim. Set. Flight control. So this is it now. This is what we have to do. So if you look at the FMC, it says move side stick full left. So we'll do just that, full left. Full left. And then it'll want us to move it to the right. Full right. 
Neutral. And then fall back. Full up. Or up, even. And then fall down. Full down. Neutral. Oh, there's rudder. Of you. Okay, what's rudder now? So full left on the rudder. Full left. And then full right. Full right. Neutral. Check. Flaps. Now it'll set the flaps. Can even flaps down. one. Anti ice. Off. Ecam status. Checked. Ecam door page. Checked. Hand signal. Received. Check this complete. Good stuff. Now we're ready for taxi. So GSX is out of the way. You can see the guy there's disappeared. Now, the taxi checklist on this only initiates after 10 knots. Um, and one of the uh, items on the checklist is the taxi light on. Now, I'm not sure why that does it after 10 knots. It doesn't make sense. I'm going to put it on now. So that's the only manual bit I was pretty confused with. I'm sure there is a logical explanation for that, though. But anyway, so the taxi lights have been turned on by me manually. Now all we need to do is taxi to runway 25, which if you've looked at the charts, which you should have done, it's straight up here left and then all the way to the end. A bit of power to get it moving, it doesn't take much, although that's nearly 40% M1. But once it gets rolling it's pretty slippery. Just a few um, things to know checklist. when he's done this checklist. You'll hear the, light, the taxi light. Yeah, they've got the called cool nose taxi. lights. And that's as required. Brake checks. Now, when he says brake checks, or she says brake checks, should I say, they want you to brake tap checks. the brakes, but wouldn't do it on a corner, so just wait until you're on a straight. And then just all you need to do is just tap them once. Brake checks. Like that. Pedal press. And Check zero. Press. Check. Auto brakes. I'll set the auto brake there. Max. See max. Data. Review. FCU. Checked. Flight instruments. Checked. Check. TO copy. Set. Check this copy. Sweet. So now the only thing to do is taxi to the runway. Um, the next is before takeoff. Now you can either let it do it, or if you're in a bit of a rush and you want to get um, get off, then you can initiate it as you're approaching the runway. Either way, it'll probably save you about 30 seconds, so it's not really that much of a difference. But what I was about to say before he uh, started doing this checklist is, when the checklists are initiated, he is actually pressing the buttons. I'm not doing that. So when you see different things being touched under his command, and before some weird innuendo comes from that, um, it's not me, it's him. So just just in case you're like, oh well I won't know what to press, you don't need to touch anything. You literally just sit in the left hand seat, let him do everything for you and fly it. Because yeah, that's what flight sim's about. Simulation of flight. Flight attendants, seats for takeoff. So there you go, he's just told the cabin crew to sit down. So with that we can hit the before takeoff checklist and it will run through his own items. Before takeoff checklist, please. Brake temperature? Checked. Brake fans? Off. Engine mode selector. Checked normal. T class. T A R A tilt above. Exterior lights. Set on. Lighting tables. Stowed. Stowed. Check this complete. Excellent. So now the next thing on the, the checklist says set takeoff thrust. So that's us ready to go now. So we'll just line up on runway 25. Everything is done for us. We don't need to bother about lights or TCAS or anything like that. It was a ridiculously bad lineup. Always when you're recording, isn't it? When you're flying on your own, nothing ever goes wrong. As soon as you put a camera to your face. Anyway, there we go. So we are ready to go. So takeoff is really simple. We're advancing to 50% and one, and then after that, let it, once it's stabilised, we can put it into something called flex. And flex is a detent on the throttles. If you look here. You've got zero, then you've got climb, then you've got flex MCT. So it's pretty much as straightforward as that. Now if we want to be realistic, 
Uh, real world Airbuses, as far as I'm aware, because they're quite nose light, when they apply takeoff thrust, they just put a little bit of downforce on the stick to stop it sort of soaring back on itself. So we'll do just that, and then they release it at 80 knots. So 50%, as you can see there on the engine display. Let that stabilize so there's no asymmetry with the thrust. And then up to flex. Okay, let's get going. Man flex Take off. 60, etc. That just confirms that it's set, and then she will also confirm. So there's 60 knots. There's 80 knots. We can neutralize the stick now because we've done enough with the elevator. Keep it Checked. in the middle of the runway as best you can. That's V1. Let's rotate just very smoothly into the air. Need to over rotate it. There we go. Now we're airborne. I'll put the gear up. Gear up. So you don't even need to bother with that. Just pitch to follow the flight director, which is the green cross on the PFD. Now we're above a 400 feet, so we can stick the autopilot on. So just press AP1. Autopilot is going on. And then just watch here where it says Manflex 60. It will start flashing LVL climb. As soon as it does that, just bring your throttles, or LVR climb, sorry. Climb bring your thrust. Throttles, uh, throttles back to climb power, which, if you look on here, is now this detent. Now we can continue to climb away. They'll put the flaps up themselves, so you could just enjoy the nice scenery. It is like the after takeoff check is nice please. as well. <laughs> I wasn't expected to see that. Engine FTX Global for you. Checked normal. Disarmed. Checked retracted. Gear up, lights off. Set off. Uh, both on. Off. Checked. One, zero, two, two. One, zero, two, two. So now we're just in the left turn towards Lisbon. Let's finish the checklist. And. All we need to do now is reset the altitude on the autopilot or the MCP and then we can just right click it which will change it to OP climb which just stands for open climb. Uh, it's basically just climbing at the speed that is selected in the uh, in the FMS as best as it can instead of following an actual climb profile. If it was just in CLB then it would be following the FMS profile. When we pass transition altitude which is in a little well, 500 feet it will automatically set standard pressure, I don't need to touch that, which is really cool. Just in case you forget to do that. There you go, Arrow just set, it. set and cross check. Going through the clouds, lovely day. Not. It's nice once you get above them, just not when you get below them. A bit turbulent, but... North Island, isn't it? No one likes North Island. Probably shouldn't have said that. Sorry, Irish people. I didn't mean that. More specifically, Northern Irish people. <laughs> Just turning towards Lisboa, and then it'll route to Pepod. Or I, just, I need to go and figure out how you pronounce that. I'm going to go with Pepod. Right, it's passing 10k now, so it'll turn the landing lights off. Lights off. Now, while we're climbing, I suppose I can show you a few fancy gimmicks with the Airbus, because uh, why not? We have a sliding table, which can come out and go away. Uh, we don't have a movable chair. We do have a movable uh, jump seat, sorry. Uh, which we can unfold and fold away. Now, this is something that I only figured out after about maybe three months of having this aircraft. See this video screen here? I didn't think it was, I thought it was just a gimmick, but actually, down on the pedestal, if you press this button here, this video button, and look at the, uh, the screen, there's actually a video on it, which is pretty nice. And then to turn it off, you can just right-click it on the, uh, you see, it turns it off. 
So that's a, a, a gimmick, I guess you could call it. Uh, you can put the wind, uh, the eye shield things down, I don't know what it's called. The visor, that's it, that's what it's called. Bring the compass down. I don't know if this one works on the other side. No, it doesn't. So it's just everything from the captain's point of view, nothing else. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. So, really, really simple. All that's going to happen now is it's going to climb to cruise, which it says here on the, uh, on the bright MCDU, it's waiting for itself to get to cruise. When it gets to cruise, all it will do is bring the sliding table out on the right hand side. That's it. Um, so, to save everyone some viewing time of watching this and climb, I will skip until we are, let's see, just before the Isle of Man, and then we can program the start and the approach and uh, get underway for our descent into Liverpool. So be prepared to be tripped out. We are going to teleport 